What the heck is vagal nerve stimulation and how can it help your anxiety and health problems? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ask Dr. Patel Show. And today we're going to talk about vagal nerve stimulation. What the heck is that all about? And how can it maybe help you? So give you an example, a patient of mine, um, Emily, which is this has been a few years ago. And Emily had very high anxiety. Uh, they would, you know, she would say, oh, my stomach feels like it's in knots all the time. My heart's racing a lot just through the day, even when resting. Um, you know, she had went to the cardiologist. They said, everything's normal in your heart. Then she said, okay, I got thoughts racing through my head all the time. In fact, to the point where I can't fall asleep at night or I wake up during the middle of the night, not really getting a deep sleep, constipated, um, cl feels like clenching the jaw and grinding teeth. Um, just, you know, throughout the day, anxious thoughts through the day. So uh, when we look at these types of issues, we've got to kind of put them into perspective and say, hey, wait a second, you know, what's really going on here with Emily? So Emily had tried going to the psychologist, uh, which she still went to. Uh, she had tried going to the psychiatrist who wanted to put her on some medications. She had tried a couple of them. They made her feel worse, didn't seem to help. And then also, um, you know, she had tried a, a few other things. And that's why she came into us. She's like, hey, I need some help with this because this is not getting better. It's actually getting worse. So then we've got to kind of put things in perspective. And the first thing we've got to do is say, wait a second, with Emily or people like Emily that have this issue, which is like their fight or flight system is on all the time. Because when we talk about anxiety, anxiety really, and we're seeing this in the newer research, anxiety is not as much of a psychological problem as it is a physiological problem. Anxiety is, we're finding out, is a result of brain inflammation. Now that's not all cases of anxiety, but there are certain uh, types that are stress driven and brain inflammation will cause thoughts. It's just our brain is outputting things that it shouldn't all the time. And thoughts are not emotions. Thoughts are a expression, which then in turn, stimulates our brain again because it's a sensory response and then that drives that fight or flight system our body's like okay uh i need to get out of here i'm running from a bear even though you're not and you're kind of stuck in that fight or flight mode which is not a good thing so we had to find out some ways to deal with this not only get down in brain inflammation but in the meantime where we're trying to get that down or get rid of things that are driving brain inflammation we've got to say you know what else can we do to kind of tone down that fight or flight system to help her out. Well, there were some things that could help like breathing and certain exercises and things like this. But as we start looking at the research, there's even some more powerful things. There's actually called vagal nerve stimulation. Now, I'm not talking about this vagus. So, all right, what I'm talking about is, so here's our brain up here. And all of this are extensions of the vagus nerve. That vagus nerve, especially known uh, as part of your parasympathetic nervous system, what's called your rest and digest system, the opposite of your fight or flight system. I guess you could say the vagus nerve and the parasympathetic nervous system, they're known to help you uh, sleep, to help you poop, to help you digest food, to help you relax. Uh, so again, this is that rest and digest side of the nervous system that we really need working when we're in this elevated fight or flight state all the time. So, you know, scientists are like, hey, what are other ways we could help these people? What are some things we can look at to maybe stimulate this vagus nerve? Because it could in turn stimulate the brain to hopefully calm down that fight or flight system. So you start to see some research papers come out and we start to read these. Uh, and so one of them, application of non-invasive vagal nerve stimulation to stress-related psychiatric disorders. What the heck does that mean? Well, non-invasive vagal nerve stimulation means they're not implanting anything. They're not surgically putting something in your body, some stuff that we don't want. They're saying, hey, we can do this without being invasive at all. And then stress-related psychiatric disorders. So some people have true psychiatric disorders, but this these types are stress-driven. Something's driving a stress response in the body, a fight or flight response. So how can we tone this down? And that's what these scientists did. They said, hey, let's stimulate that vagal nerve. So here we go. Transcutaneous vagal nerve stimulation. Now we'll talk about how they do it, maybe kind of what they used here in a minute, but in, and how this can apply to you and possibly how you can do this yourself. But they stimulated that nerve and that stimulates the brain stem. So this is where that vagus nerve, that it's actually cranial nerve 10, it comes off of the brain stem. So we're now stimulating the brain stem. And in the brain stem, we've got this area called the reticular activating system. Uh, and we've got this 
um, uh, pedunculopontine nucleus, you don't have to remember that, locus ceruleus, you don't have to remember that, raphe nucleus, these are just little clusters of nerve cells in the brain, neurons in the brain. Now these right here release acetylcholine, these right, which is for focus, concentration, memory, um, helps with motor responses, locus ceruleus, norepinephrine, so this can also calm down things, and then raphe nucleus, there's your 5-HT, which is serotonin, which helps to decrease anxiety. So they're like, wow, hey, we stimulate this. And what happens? That stimulates the cortex. So now the cortex, the frontal lobes of the brain especially, says, wait a second, a racing thought, calm it down. Stop it, buddy. Hey, uh, you know, sh things going on in my head, the frontal lobes of the brain should tame those and, and halt them. Um, also, it helps to stimulate the cingulate gyrus, the amygdala, the hippocampus, which can tie into emotions, especially the amygdala. This is like the fear center of the brain. This is part of that fight or flight system in a big way. And then interesting, this hippocampus. So that is the, the, the inner part of the temporal lobe of your brain. This is your long-term memory area. So very important that's working too. And the thing is, is stress is very destructive to that. And then the thalamus, which does a lot of things, but it's also a pain area of the brain. So what happens when they start stimulating this area of the brain? People start to sleep better. Their emotions improve. Arousal occurs. Now, what is arousal? Arousal means, hey, uh, when I wake up in the morning, I'm awake. Through the day, I'm awake. I'm alert. I can focus and concentrate better. Plasticity. The brain starts to wire better. It's We start to get wiring of areas for brain improvement and memory increase. So pretty darn important, pretty great stuff here. Also, when you stimulate all that, that vagus nerve continues to send signals down to your heart and lungs. So the heart stops racing so fast. The lungs don't feel congested like you can't breathe. And then that comes back up and hey, the brain says, hey, Hey, we can uh, we can handle this. This is good stuff. And now the thing is, is is they said, hey, you know, by doing this, we got a favorable effect on physiology that was measurable. So, how will you do this? And and what were they really doing and looking at? Well, this was out of the Journal of Neuroinflammation. So they're saying, wait a second, this can also help with inflammation in the body. Yeah, you stimulate that vagus nerve, and you start to change the microglia in the brain. So you calm down the immune system in the brain. Here's that vagus nerve area. Actually where the stimulation is going to occur is in the ear. I'm going to get to that here in a second. Now also once you stimulate that, not only does it help the brain and, and, and decrease some of the inflammatory side of the immune system in the brain, but it also decreases some of the inflammation in the liver. And then it also decreases some of the inflammatory output of the spleen. The spleen's a major, major immune system organ. This is especially where your B cells are made, um, but it decreases or it helps the immune system there and decreases the inflammatory side. And then a big one here, helps the gut. Not only the gut health, but decreased inflammation in the gut. So pretty amazing stuff here. And so where are they stimulating this? Well, it's very interesting because as we look at the ear, who knew about the ear a long, long time ago? acupuncturists in China. They knew, hey, well, and probably some of the other Asian countries too, they knew, hey, there's these points in the ear that help people. So these are, these are on here too, but look right here, the auricular branch of the vagus nerve, auricular means ear. So right in here, see this whole blue area? You stimulate here or anywhere around it, you're gonna hit that vagus nerve. So what happens here? How can we do this? How can we help ourselves with this? Well, very interesting. So these guys, they took this device and what is it? Does it poke you or something? Does it, does it zap you? No, it's vibration. It's vibration actually. It's like a pen with vibration. Now I've been looking around and I'm like, I can't find the pen that they used here um, online, at least like on some of the regular websites that I've seen. So I actually, I went to um, Amazon and I'm looking for one and I, I found one. So I'll put a link to it below that was fairly close. I mean, there's actually quite a few of them out there, but this one seemed to be pretty decent. It's finding one with a small enough area that you can kind of get to that, um, that area in the ear. So here's what they're doing, stimulating these areas. And, and basically they're saying it's called manual ear acupressure. So yeah, you know, and I mean, you could rub the area acupressure wise, but they're like, hey, this works even better. And in fact, not only did it work good, but the heart rate variability improved. This means the heart calmed down. Um, a lot of other vasculature, blood pressure can decrease. Great stuff. Now this was even more interesting. So now they said, wait a second, how could this maybe help people who have autoimmune conditions like 
Rheumatoid arthritis. This is out of the Journal of Bioelectronic Medicine. Wow, these guys are like, hey, wait a second. They're looking in the same area. They're looking in the ear also. Now to find this area in your ear, I would suggest you take your phone, take a picture of your ear, and then you can kind of say, hey, here's where I need to, to get. You can actually, you know, kind of enlarge that picture and look at it and kind of match it up to the pictures on this video and say here. So same thing, they're using a, a similar device where they are it's called vibrotactile device. That means it's vibration and uh, stimulation there. So, and then what they did, what did they notice here? Uh, was it as much about the anxiety, the fight or flight, the psychiatric side, or psycho psychological side? No, this was about the immune system. What they noted was application of this device. Um, not only did it, it, it inhibited peripheral uh, blood production of TNF alpha, interleukin one beta, and interleukin six. What the heck does that mean? Those are inflammatory cytokines. So it's inhibiting inflammation in the body. It's bringing inflammation down. Wow, pretty good stuff here. So, you know, being, being able to just have one of these things and try it out. Now, I would say the vibration, you want kind of lower frequency vibration. You know, something that just, ah, that's maybe a little too much. You want something, it's kind of a lower frequency vibration. And just on these areas, it can be either ear. Um, and uh, again, this can help calm down. I think you're going to start to see these devices come out more. More companies are going to catch on. Um, they have been using some electronic type, which just isn't that comfortable. Uh, and, and then of course, an acupuncturist can poke a needle in there too, which some people like, some people don't. Uh, but this type with the vibration is what the research showed. Now, again, before you do anything like this, always ask your doctor and say, hey, you know, can this be good for me? Or And then they may not know. But uh, again, uh, we don't want to do anything. If you already have a pre-existing health issue, you should always contact your doctor before trying anything like this. But it definitely has been shown in the research to have some great uh, benefits there. So I was excited to bring that to you today. And I think you'll also like this next video, which is uh, really good. But I will talk to you soon and I'll see you there.